Hello! Magandang hapon! Kumusta po kayo lahat? Welcome to the May 2021 edition of the UP SLIS Webinar Series. We welcome our viewers, students, teachers of library and information science, information professionals, and all our friends and fans in the Philippines and across the globe. I am Paul Jason Perez, a faculty member from UP SLIS, your host and moderator for this webinar. Before we proceed, please take note that our webinar is in high definition or HD. For an optimal viewing experience, please check and adjust the settings of this live stream to HD. You may also take the opportunity to check the audio and adjust the volume to a comfortable listening level. This webinar can be seen live on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page, UPSLIS. We also launched our new channel on Twitch TV, so you can watch this webinar at twitch.tv slash UPSLIS. This webinar is part of the Hashtag Webinar Wednesday, a series of monthly webinar offerings of the UP School of Library and Information Studies as we count down to our 60th anniversary this July 21. That's just two months away. And we're very excited for the upcoming activities we'll be rolling out soon, and I hope that you are too. And before we proceed to our talk, allow me to explain the mechanics of this webinar. If you have any questions during the lecture, you may post your question by going to menti.com and typing in the code 55475865. All questions will be tackled in a question and answer portion after the speaker has presented. Please take note that we will not be entertaining questions posted in the chat. Again, you may post your question by going to menti.com and typing in the code 55475865. The website and code will, all be, will also be shown on the screen throughout the talk. Alternatively, you could use the QR code also shown on screen to go to the questions page. At menti.com, you may view the questions posted by our other viewers. If a question you wish to ask has already been posted, please upvote the question by clicking its thumbs up icon so we can prioritize and address it first. We will be issuing certificates of participation to those who will be joining us in the live event. We ask that you finish the webinar and watch out for the announcement containing the link to where you can register for your certificate. As part of the requirements for the certificate, you need to answer a question correctly. We advise that you listen intently to the speaker during the talk. If you answer incorrectly, you can rewatch the video and try again. For registered professionals, this webinar may be applied for Continuing Professional Development, or CPD, as a self-directed learning activity. Again, please stay with us until the end of the webinar for instructions on how to get your certificate. If in case you miss portions of this webinar, you may view this as a Facebook video or check our YouTube channel at UPSLIS. Okay, uh, last month we had our speaker, Professor Mark Anthony Santos, who talked about how library and information professionals can help our medical frontliners by providing them with timely and relevant information in the fight against COVID-19. For this afternoon, we are joined once again by the same speaker, but this time to talk about the new IFLA library reference model. Our speaker this afternoon is Mark Anthony A. Santos. Sir Mark is a graduate of New England College with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 2009. He then earned his undergraduate degree in Library and Information Science in the University of the East in April 2012. He garnered the second place in the Librarian Licensure Examination of the same year and received his master's degree in Library and Information Science from the same university in December 2014. He is the current president of the Philippine Association of Teachers of Library and Information Science Incorporated and a regular member of the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated and the Medical and Health Librarians Association of the Philippines. His interests and specialization in librarianship include cataloging and classification, clinical librarianship, hospital librarianship, health sciences, information resources and services, and education for health sciences librarianship. He previously worked as a clinical librarian of the neurocritical unit 
of St. Luke's Medical Center in Quezon City, library assistant and library consultant at St. Luke's College of Medicine. At present, he is a faculty member of the School of Library and Information Studies at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Ladies and gentlemen, to talk about the IFLA Library Reference Model towards the new RDA, let us all welcome Professor Mark Anthony A. Santos. Hello, Sir Mark. Good afternoon. For today's lecture, I will be giving an overview of a conceptual model, which I believe reflects the future direction in the field of information organization, more specifically when it comes to resource discovery. When we started implementing RDA in our uh, libraries or specifically in the creation of our catalog records, uh, it was a challenge for its users, particularly the catalogers, because we have to be familiar with the concepts of uh, functional requirements for bibliographic records. In the terminologies that they've used for RDA reflects that of the terms which were utilized in FRBR, or we can simply call it a fervor. Okay. Uh, the difference in the structure of AACR2 and RDA uh, made it necessary for us to be familiar with fervor uh, in order for us to navigate and utilize RDA. Since the initial publication of uh, Ferber in 1998, there were uh, additional models uh, which were created to supplement, or but the term is to expand Ferber for specific aspects of the bibliographic universe. So in addition to fervor or bibliographic data, the what we call the FR family of conceptual models included the functional requirements for authority data or FAND and the functional requirements for subject authority data or PRASAD. Okay. Now for a quick uh overview or a background, and also it's a review for most of us who are already um, familiar with RDA and Ferber. Ferber uh, was released and approved uh, by the standing committee of the section on cataloging of IFLA on September uh, 5, 1997. It was amended and corrected uh, through February 2009. So, uh, in Ferber, we are presented with uh, a series of entities which are grouped into three. So we have group one, group two, and group three entities. Now under group one, we have the entities work, expression, manifestation and item. Now these entities reflect the intellectual or artistic creations or the products of those intellectual and or artistic endeavors. Group two, on the other hand, these are the entities who are responsible for the creation or it could be for the translation or ownership or manufacture, depending on the context of this group one entities. So it could be an author, be a publisher, an owner, uh, someone who translated or edited the uh, work, expression, manifestation, or item. It could be a person or a corporate body. Now, group three 
entities are those which are considered as subjects of your group one entity. So we have the concept, the object, event, or place. Now under FRAD, which was produced in December 2008 and uh, approved in uh, March 2009, oh, then further corrected and amended July 2013. Now, under FRAD, since it, it, it involves the, or a conceptual model in the creation and maintenance and organization of our authority data, uh, it expanded uh, the entities which were uh, created or introduced to us in Ferber. So we have the entities under group one the in Ferber work, especially manifestation item. We also have the three group three entities from Ferber, concept, objects, event, and faces. Then in group two entities, they have included or they've added the entity family, wherein the family is uh, a group of uh, more than one person who were related either by blood, uh, through marriage, or through uh, legal uh, means, but or who nevertheless constitute themselves and they refer themselves as a family. That is in uh, uh, not similar to what a corporate body is because a corporate body is a group of people who represent themselves as a group uh, under a particular name, but they are not necessarily related. <laughs> then we have the entity's name and identifier, which are the appellations, or could be used as appellations for person, family, corporate body, work, expression, manifestation, item, and concept, object, events, and places. Then we have the controlled access point, which is the form of a name, which are assigned to represent these entities. Now, the rules are the basis on how the controlled access points are created when your agency is the entity uh, responsible for the assignment of this particular controlled access points. In Frasad, which was the report of the ITLA working group on the functional requirements for subject authority records of PRASAR. This was formed in 2005. That report was approved by the standing committee of the IFLA sections on cataloging and classification indexing in June 2010. Now, under PRASAD, we are presented with two entities. We have the thema and the nomen. Now, the thema is defined as any entity used as a subject of a work. So well, we can say that it is uh, similar to how uh, group three entities are used in uh, Ferber. So in group three entities, we have the concept, object, event, and places, and it will also uh, include group one and group two entities. Because particular work could also be about a certain person, which is a group two entity in Ferber, and a work could also be about another work. So here, the thema is that any entity. It could be any of those entities that uh, we know in Ferber, as long as they are used as a subject of a work. 
So in that we have a relationship. Now, a work contains a tema, and a tema is contained in a particular work. Now, how about a nomen? The nomen is defined as any sign or sequence of signs, could be alphanumeric characters, symbol, or even a sound, okay? images, that a tema is known by, referred to, or addressed as. So what do we mean by that? For example, you have the concept of elevator. We refer to elevator using the word elevator. However, some people also refer to the concept elevator as a lift. So you have two nomens which are referring to the same tema. So that's how uh, that relationship works between tema and anomen. Uh, tema is referred to by anomen, or anomen is assigned to, or is an affiliation of a tema. It can uh, also work with other languages. For example, uh, the word or the term used to refer to an elevator in uh, a particular language is also a type of nomen. Now, the, although they refer or they use uh, different words, as long as they uh, refer to the same uh, tema, they are all considered as nomens, those tema. Now, in this table, uh, this is a comparison of the user tasks that were. Um, presented in the three uh, FR models. So in Ferber, we have find, identify, select, and obtain. In Prad, we have find, identify, contextualize, and justify. And in Prasad, we have find, identify, select, and explore. Uh, as you can see here, uh, some of the user tasks are utilized in all of the three uh, FR models, although they differ in the context that they were used. For example, in Ferber, the find refers to uh, the activities that we use to uh, search for a particular entity using a series of search criteria. However, in Ferber, we are referring to bibliographic uh, resources. However, in Prad, when we look or we uh, use find as a user task, we are looking or we are searching for uh, authority records. So it could be a name of a person, it could be a name of a corporate body, uh, a name of a work, and all the other entities as presented in Prad. That's also, that also works with uh, Prasad. Where in, in Find, we search for subjects. Now, you will notice here that contextualize and explore are in the same row. Now, although they are not using the same term, they are similar in the context that both of them establish relationships for an entity with other entities. So for example, in contextualized, we place a person, a corporate body, and any entity in context and establish the relationship of that particular entity with other entities. So for example, we have a person and we have 
of corporate body. So how are they related? It could be that a person is a member of that corporate body. Or it could also be uh, an employer or an employee. And we can also have one person and another person. Now, this person as an entity refers to the real name of an individual. And this person okay, refers to a pseudonym okay, of that same individual. So there we established uh, a relationship that this person referred to its real name or her real name okay, is the pen or has a pen name. Then how uh, the pen name is used by this person having this real name. Similarly, in Explore, okay, we could also establish relationships in uh, subjects. For example, uh, what is the relationship between the term um, animals and mammals? So with that, we can say that uh, we have a hierarchical relationship because a mammal is, or mammals are, or we can consider as a narrower term for animals. And animal is a broader term for the term or for the subject mammals. Okay. Now on this screen or in this slide, uh, I think uh, most of us who are uh, using or who are familiar uh, with uh, resource description and access or RDA, this is the interface that we've uh, mostly uh, used or this is the interface that we encounter the most during the time that we are uh, using it. Most especially uh, uh, until December of last year. So here in this screen, we can see that we have uh, the tabs and under the tab RDA, we are presented with uh, contents. Now, this is what I've been mentioning earlier that in order for us to navigate and utilize RDA, we need to be familiar with the terminologies that were used in or presented in Fervor. Since RDA uh, utilized Fervor, Basad, and FRAD as conceptual models in the creation of RDA. Of course, along with uh, AAC, uh, as a basis, we have AACR2, ISBD, and Mark 21. So under here, for example, we have uh, section one, recording attributes of manifestation and item. Section two, recording attributes of work and expression. So this is entirely different uh, in terms of its structure compared to Anglo-American cataloging rules or AECR2, wherein we have uh, part one containing the chapters uh, pertaining to the rules for the general rules for description and uh, chapters two onwards are though, well, until chapter 13 refer to the specific rules for a particular type of material. For example, chapter three in AACR2 gives us the rules on how to describe cartographic materials. So this is no longer uh, linked with RDA. So we need to be familiar what are the attributes or what are the elements that we are uh, recording. Is it an attribute of an Agent? Is it an attribute of a work, an expression, a manifestation, or an item? Now, 
Um, some of you might have noticed this. The latest update for this version of RDA Toolkit was uh, released on April 2017. It is now 2021. So some of you might have wondered uh, where are the updates after uh, April 2017. Uh, the said update uh, which was released in April 2017, was the penultimate release for the then current RDA before the rollout of uh, the 3R project. So uh, in this interface, you will notice that there is uh, a particular information here, which is not found in its uh, previous iteration when it was the then official or current RDA toolkit. So I'm referring to this one. So what does it mean that we have uh, that return to the official RDA toolkit? Does it mean that this uh, version is no longer the official RDA toolkit? This interface, probably uh, some of you may have noticed it, that if you are going to access the toolkit, we use the URL access.rdatoolkit.org. Now, uh, early last year, when we uh, access the RDA toolkit through that said URL, we are presented with the previous interface. But now, if you are going to log in or access the RDA toolkit, we are presented with this interface. This is entirely different from that of its uh, previous interface. Because uh, on December 15 uh, of last year, this was then the beta site of the new RDA toolkit, new RDA toolkit. On that day, it became the official version or the official RDA toolkit. This uh, release, or they, they call it as a switch over right? from uh, its beta site to the new or the official RDA toolkit. This marked the formal end of the 3R project or the formally called as the RDA toolkit restructure and redesigned project. As stated by the RDA steering committee, RDA has now incorporated the terminology, concepts, and approaches associated with linked data. Also, as mentioned by the RDA steering committee or the RSC, this new RDA is not a cataloging manual like AACR2. And it is no longer exclusively rooted in Anglo-American traditions. Now, instead, according to RSC, it is an international standard which provides a higher level framework for aspects of the bibliographic universe. Now, with the new R official RDA, it is now in alignment not with uh, Ferber, Pad, and Prasad, but with the IFLA. Library Reference Model, or LRM. This also resulted in the restructuring of RDA to make sense with the IFLA LRM and, as I've mentioned earlier, with link practices of link data. So if you are going to navigate 
this new RDA toolkit, it will not. It is no longer uh, the same as with its uh, previous iteration. Meaning that if you want to look for rules, it is no longer in the form that you have sections, you have chapters, and each uh, particular rule is uh, numbered uh, with, for example, uh, rule 1.1.1.1. Okay? That is no longer the case. And the entities, if you are, if you have access uh, to the RDA toolkit right now, okay, you will also notice in the drop down menu under here, you will be presented with uh, new uh, entities. Aside from those which are already utilized in the previous uh, iteration of RDA toolkit. And uh, here, you will also notice that it has a link to the original RDA toolkit or the original toolkit. So if you are not yet familiar with this new interface and you are currently utilizing the original toolkit, you can still access it. So for those who would like to uh, explore or eventually utilize this official or new official RDA toolkit. So we need to be familiar with the structure of uh, IFLA ERLRM, the entities that they've introduced uh, in the said conceptual model and how they have uh, consolidated those uh, three FR models. Now, what is the IFLA library reference model? The IFLA uh, LRM as uh, defined in the final report, it aims to be a high level conceptual reference model developed within an enhanced entity relationship modeling framework. So it's uh, similar to that of Ferber, Pratt, and Prasad, wherein we uh, or they utilize uh, an entity relationship model. The IFLA LRM was approved by the Ferber Review Group in November 2016. And uh, the final document was approved by the IFLA Committee on Standards okay, and endorsed by the IFLA Professional Committee on August 18, 2017. So uh, it has been more than three years since uh, the release of the final document of IFLA LRM. Now, similar to Ferber, Frad, and Passat, IFLA LRM being a high-level conceptual model, it is not a set of rules like AACR2. Now, instead, uh, as intended by the creators of IFLA LRM. It is uh, to be used as a guide or a basis on which to formulate uh, cataloging rules and for implementing bibliographic systems. Now, what are the user tasks in IFLA LRM? Now, unlike in Ferber, Frad, and Prasad, wherein we only have uh, four user tasks here, being a consolidation of the three FR models. They've uh, enumerated five user tasks. 
So we have find, identify, select, obtain, explore. So find is wherein we bring together or to bring together uh, information about one or more resources of interest by searching on any relevant criteria. Identify, on the other hand, is uh, defined as to create uh, clearly understand the nature of the resources found and to distinguish between similar resources. For example, if you have uh, or if you've uh, found uh, two films which uh, bear the same title, if you are the user or if you are the one looking for a particular film, you will be able to distinguish uh, the two films by further examining its uh, attributes. Then from there, uh, we can now select, which is to determine the suitability of the resources found and also to enable us to uh, either uh, accept or reject that uh, specific resources. In obtain, okay, similar to uh, the obtain a user task in Perber, okay, it is to, for us to be able to access or to retrieve uh, the content of the resource. And and here in Explore, this is for us to discover resources using the relationships between them and thus place these resources in a context. Now, what are the entities uh, defined by uh, or in LRM? Uh, if the LRM uh, defined uh, defines only 11 entities. Okay. Now, you will also notice here in this diagram that it is uh, in the form of a uh, hierarchy. Okay. That is because uh, if the LRM entities are in a superclass or in subclass structure, okay. now, uh, because of that particular type of structure, it permits the transfer of attributes and relationships from the subclass to its subclasses. Now, Frasad entity, Tama, if you can recall, is uh, generalized and thus renamed res. Uh, res is uh, the Latin for Thing. And it serves as the top entity in this hierarchy, the superclass of all the other entities. Some entities uh, from the other uh, FR models okay, were retained here. Particularly, we have work, fashion, manifestation. Item, you have no man, you have place, you have person. Although their definitions were, uh, as they uh, refer it in the final document, they were reworked. Okay? This is to avoid using one entity in the definition of another, okay? and also to avoid the, the term alpha numeric in the definition of expression. And it, uh, they also clarify the nature of the manifestation as a set. Now, some uh, new uh, entities uh, identified here are agent. Uh, agent is uh, defined to encompass the group two entities of Ferber which is your person and corporate body, and also including the entity uh, family from Prad. Uh, person uh, 
is retained using a reworking of the Ferber definition, not that of the definition in Prad. This uh, new entity, collective agent, this encompasses family and the corporate body entities from Frad okay, and Ferber. The said uh, and former entities were duplicated, but they may be viewed as types or categories of a collective agent. Uh, the term place okay, was reused okay, for a new general place entity. This is from um, the group three. Uh, entities of Ferber. And we also have a new entity uh, time span. Now, the FRAD entity name and FRASAT entity nomen were merged into a single entity under the term nomen okay, using a more generalized definition. Now, the FRAD entity's uh, identifier and control access point okay, uh, were deprecated, but uh, similar to the family and corporate body as uh, types of collective agents, both the identifier and collective uh, or controlled access point rather, are dip, uh, can be viewed as types or categories of nomen. The two entities from FRAD, particularly um, agency and rules, uh, are served or served in the modeling of uh, internal processes for libraries. Uh, for the assignment of uh, controlled access points. And thus, they are deemed uh, outside of the functional scope of the IFLA LRM model. That's why they are no longer uh, considered as entities of uh, LRM. Now, let us um, uh, proceed to an overview of the, each of these uh, entities in IFLA LRM. If uh, first is you have the REST entity. Now, uh, under this uh, name of the entity, we have this uh, ID. This is the identifier used in the final report to refer to this particular uh, entity. Each entities are assigned with this particular uh, code. Now, what is REST? Uh, REST is any entity in the universe of discussion. So being a superclass uh, in the hierarchy of entities, it could be any of those uh, uh, entities identified uh, early in the earlier slide. So, what are the examples of uh, RECs? You have uh, results, which is a word. We have Bob Ong, uh, referring to a person okay, who is an author. An association, Philippine Libraries Association Incorporated. Uh, a concrete statue by Guillermo Tarantino, uh, the oblation. A writing system, the by uh, A concept, which is medicine. Could also refer to it, uh, or RS could also refer to a city, which is Manila in the Philippines. Uh, it could also be uh, an event, which is the cry of Pugad Lawin. And uh, it could also be a work. Uh, the cataloging classification uh, work uh, written by Lois Mai Chan. Now, how about uh, work? Here, it is defined as the intellectual or artistic content of a distinct 
creation. You will notice here that although they are using the same term, they, they have reworked the definition as compared to that of uh, the work in Berber and in Prad. So what are the examples of a work? So you have the Nolimen Tangere, the book uh, by Lois Maichan, Catalog in Classification, Mars Rabelos Darna. So the, here, the Darna refers to the idea of the concept, okay? not the uh, entirely that of the character. Okay? And we have probably some of you were uh, fans of this um, television series, Crash Landing on You. We have the Lupang Hiniram, which is the Philippine national anthem. And for some uh, people like me who were a fan, who were fans of this um, anime, which came from a manga, you have the uh, Yujo Akasho. Next, how about an expression? The expression is a distinct combination of signs conveying intellectual or artistic content. So it's still uh, similar to that of the expression in Ferber in that it still uh, refers to how the ideas or content are communicated to us okay, through the use of our human senses. So what are the examples of this expression? So we have uh, the Tagalog translation by Virgilio Almario of Rizal's No Limit Angere. Okay? So in this uh, context, No Limit Angere is communicated to us okay, through written text and through the use of uh, Tagalog language, uh, translated by uh, Virgilio Almario. Here we have the fourth edition of uh, Lois Mai Chan's Cataloging and Classification. Then we have the Tagalog text of Mars Ravilos Darna as a uh, we see it or as uh, presented in its uh, first iteration in the form of uh, uh, still images okay, and uh, text, basically a comic. Then another type of expression is you have the Filipino translation of the South Korean television series Flash Landing on You. Okay? So you have the original uh, language, okay? Then another type of expression of the same work is that when it was dubbed, okay, for it to be uh, easily understood by uh, viewers here in the Philippines or those who are more comfortable with uh, viewing a particular series or film in the language that they are most familiar with. Uh, Another uh, type of expression is the lupang hinira. Okay? This time it refers, this refers uh, to the, either the instrumental or it could be the one with the lyrics. Okay? Then another uh, type of expression is the original Japanese text of uh, the manga Yu Yu Hakusho. And also, okay, if you have the original Japanese text, Another type of expression of the same work is its English translation. Now, a manifestation is defined as a set of all carriers that are assumed to share the same characteristics as to intellectual or artistic content and aspects of physical form. That set is defined by both the overall content and the production plan for its carrier or carriers. So what are uh, examples of uh, manifestations? Uh, in this context, you have now the publication of the book Cataloging and Classification by Lois Machan and Athena Salaba, uh, fourth edition, which was published by Roman in Litfield in Lana, Maryland with this particular ISBN. 
Then, uh, for the Tagalog pronunciation of Noli Metangaray, its manifestation is the one in book form published by Adarna House. Another type of manifestation is the film, okay, Darna, starring Rosa del Rosario in VHS format. Since the work is now uh, contained okay, in a particular form or carrier. Uh, the South Korean uh, television series, if uh, one type of manifestation is that it is uh, released in DVD format. Okay? Another uh, type of um, manifestation of the same expression and work could also refer to the one that was released in Blu-ray uh, format or purely in uh, an electronic uh, streaming format. Then also we have a type of a manifestation rather, an, an audio recording of Lupang Hinirang in MP3 format. Then for the Yu Yu Hakusho manga, we have the Tangkobon release, which is a series of uh, bound uh, volumes. Now, an item is an object or objects carrying signs intended to convey intellectual or artistic content. Now, what are the examples? So from those manifestations, we have this uh, specific exemplars. We have a copy of that particular book. Another copy okay, for this one, uh, No Limit Angere, okay, as published uh, by uh, Adorna House. Okay? And uh, this particular type of copy is signed okay, by Virgilio Almario himself. Which could uh, differentiate differentiate it from other copies. Then you have a copy of the film Darna, starring Rosal del Rosario in VHS format. A specific copy of uh, Crash Landing on You uh, series of uh, DVD format, and a single MP3 file containing the audio recording of Lupang Hinira. And you have uh, one complete set of Tankobon of the Yu Yu Hakusho manga. So how about uh, agent? Agent is defined as an entity capable of deliberate actions, of being granted rights, and of being held accountable for its actions. Now, uh, the agent, okay, as uh, presented earlier in the hierarchical uh, diagram, okay? uh, it has a superclass, which is res, but it is also a superclass for the person and collective agent entities. Now, so what are the examples of an agent? It could be a person in, and a collective agency, such as you have Jose Rizal, Lois Mai Chan, uh, Virgilio Almario, Bob Ong, uh, an association, Philippine Liberal Association Incorporated, uh, a family or a royal family, which is the House of Windsor, and uh, you have the Lacruz family. Okay? Now, a person, to be specific, uh, is defined as an individual human being with its superclass, uh, the entity agent. So uh, using the same examples, these are uh, the examples of a uh, person. Then a collective agent okay? is a gathering or organization of persons. So you have more than uh, one person bearing a particular name and capable of acting as one unit. So same with the entity person, its superclass is the agent entity. So examples, you have the association and the two 
families. Now, how about the entity nomen? The nomen is an association between an entity and a designation that refers to it. Okay? So if you can recall my earlier discussion about thema and nomen, okay, it is similar to that, wherein you have uh, a particular term which refers to a particular entity. For example, uh, we have uh, this set of nomens okay, for a person. Uh, Jose Rizal okay, as a way of referring to the person Jose Rizal. Okay. So we are using the name Jose Rizal to refer to that person. We could also refer. We could also refer to that person as simply as Doctor Rizal. Okay? That is also one type of nomen okay, referring to the same person. Pepe could also be a wave or another uh, manner for us to refer to the same person, Jose Rizal. Okay? And in this form, we have Rizal, comma Jose, comma. 1861-1896, which is also a way of referring to the person, Jose Rizal. Okay. However, in this form, it is what we call the preferred access point, okay. uh, formulated according to the rules of RDA. Okay. So uh, in this uh, set of nomens, we have four nomens referring to a particular person. Now, uh, how about in the case of a word? The manga Yu Yu Hakusho could also be referred to uh, the name Yu Yu Hakusho as written in uh, Roman letters. So simply Yu Yu Hakusho. But in its original language, they are using uh, the script okay, that they're using in that uh, language, particularly here in this example, they are using kanji okay, as a way of referring to the word Yu Yu Hakusho. Now, uh, probably some of you might uh, not be familiar with Yu Yu Hakusho, but uh, probably since we are in the Philippines, most of you are more familiar with the title Ghost Fighter as a way of referring to the work you do. So, um, in a similar context, okay, since uh, foreign language um, films or series or television series, okay, when it is uh, released or broadcast here in the Philippines, some uh, television stations in the preparation for it being or to be broadcast, they sometimes change the names of the characters in order for it to be uh, easier for its viewers to recall them okay, or to refer to them. For example, uh, in the same manga, we have uh, the character or the main character named Yusuke Oramishi, but here in the Philippines, he is uh, known as Yuji, similar with uh, uh, Alfred, who is, who is called or is referred to as Kowabara in the original Japanese uh, language. Now, Dennis as Kurama, and you have Vincent as he, and another uh, uh, character, which I'm um, uh, particularly uh, fond with because of his name. We have Mr. Valdez, who is named as Sakyo in the original uh, version or original Japanese language version. 
Now, that is also the thing when it comes to the release of uh, some Korean uh, drama or Korean drama series here in the Philippines, wherein they change the nomen of the work. For example, uh, maybe some of you have uh, watched this series, And This Love, or uh, it is also referred to as Autumn in My Heart. Then, Some of the characters, well, particularly the main characters there, okay, um, they were renamed here in the Philippine release. Okay? So specifically, we have Johnny, uh, which is played by, uh, or who is played by Song Sim Hoon, okay? where in, in its Korean original uh, language or release, he is named as Yoon. Junsu. Similarly, we have the character Jenny, played by the uh, actress Song Hye Kyo. She is referred to the original uh, Korean release as Choi Yunsu. So, although they are different when it comes to the name, to refer to them, they are nomens okay, referring to the same character or the same work. Now, how about the place? Place is simply a given extent of space. So what are the examples of uh, a place? It would be a continent, a particular body of water, country, a particular region in the country, such as Metro Manila, a particular uh, place, such as Rizal Park, and also be a similar uh, body of water, such as Pasig River, or could also be a planet, which is Pluto. And the time span which is a temporal extent having a beginning, an end, and a duration. So what are examples of time span? You have the 21st century, the period of time beginning on January 1, uh, 2019, ending on December 31, 2019. Now, it may be referred to as uh, simply as 2019 okay, or for its Nomen. Then uh, another example is the zero one zero one which is the time span of a day expressed in the Gregorian calendar in the date, month, and year format. Also be um, period, Middle Ages. Now. Being LRM as uh, utilizing the entity relationship model, okay? in this diagram, uh, I'm showing you an overview of the relationships of IFLA LRM entities. So some of the established relationships here from uh, Ferber were uh, utilized okay, or adopted in LRN. Okay. Particularly here, we have a work which is realized through its expression. Your expression is embodied in your manifestation and the manifestation is exemplified by its item. On this side, we have uh, an agent, okay, wherein a person is an agent or a collective agent is an agent. Now, if your agent is a collective agent, a particular agent okay, could be a member okay, of that particular collective agent. So for example, you have uh, a person 
who is a member of this particular family. Okay? So, for example, Juan de la Cruz, the person, is a member of the de la Cruz family. Then, I have a nomen, okay, which is an appellation of res. Okay? Res could, again, res could either be a word, an expression, an agent, okay, a manifestation, an item. Okay? So we have a nomen, okay, which is uh, an appellation referring to this particular type of uh, res. Okay? Then you have a res, which is associated with a particular place or uh, time span. Now, uh, this is just an overview of the relationships of uh, the entities in ITLA LRM. Okay? Because uh, in the final report on in the uh, specific document of uh, ITLA LRM, they have declared a total of 36 uh, relationships. So it could be uh, a relationship between arrest and arrest, uh, arrest and a word, okay? a word and its expression, and uh, among others. So, uh, after um, having an overview of uh, IFLA LRM and its uh, entities, okay? so what are we going to do moving forward and in relation to the new RDA? Now, uh, according to the uh, RDA steering committee, when they did the switch over, it is not uh, the same as to uh, its implementation. Meaning, uh, as users okay, or as uh, maintainers or creators of uh, bibliographic systems, okay, such as your catalogs, we are not uh, being required to implement the new RDA immediately as soon as it was uh, released uh, in its official form last December uh, of uh, 2020. So they leave it to the particular institution, such as libraries, uh, to decide when they are ready to implement the new RDA. It will also depend on the readiness, not only of the one or the institution or agency who will implement it, but also for its users. So if um, your institution okay, is currently implementing the, or the rules okay, of the original RDA toolkit, then it is okay that you uh, hold the implementation of the new official RDA toolkit. Okay? However, uh, the RSC or the RDA study committee mentioned in their uh, statement that uh, they might, there they become a time that the original RDA toolkit will no longer be uh, available or accessible in the RDA toolkit. Okay? For now, we can still access both the official RDA toolkit and the original RDA toolkit. And by the way, if you want to access the original RDA toolkit, you can uh, use the URL original.rdatoolkit.org. Okay. It's because uh, the URL access that RDA toolkit.org will um, present you the new official RDA toolkit. Okay. Now, uh, it will, there may come a time that we will no longer be able to access the original RDA toolkit. Uh, of course, they will make an announcement, okay, according to them, about it. 
okay, if they are going to uh, cease the availability of the original article toolkit. But for us moving forward, uh, we need to adapt to the changing environment of uh, information organization. So if RDA uh, has moved into this direction, then we uh, as uh, organizers of information, we also need to adapt to these new uh, changes and how we can make uh, information resources or simply entities searchable and retrievable for our target users. So I will just be presenting my references here. You can uh, read further the final reports of the three FR models, okay? the functional requirements for bibliographic records, uh, functional requirements for authority data and functional requirements for subject authority data as a means of review or in comparison on how they do it okay? or how they've implemented it and consolidated it in the IFLA library reference model. Now, in addition here, uh, I would also uh, endorse that you also take a look at the transition mapping, okay? so how they were able to uh, consolidate the user tasks, entities, attributes, and relationships uh, in Ferber, Flat, and Facade, okay? and how they are mapped to their equivalents in the IFLA LRM. Okay. So with that, uh, thank you very much for listening, and I wish you all the best and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Mark, for such a rich introduction about the IFLA LRM and entities. We have a lot of viewers and there are actually some questions waiting for you. To our audience, if you have any questions for our speaker, you can still submit your questions to menti.com and key in the code 55475865. You could also use the QR code shown on screen to go to our questions page. Please check the previously posted questions and upvote questions you would like to be prioritized. While we're waiting for more questions, I would like to announce a few things. We're currently accepting applications to our Master of Library and Information Science postgraduate program for the academic year 2021 to 2022. Interested applicants may visit bit.ly slash MLIS 2021 to download the prospectus and application requirements. The application is open to all individuals with an undergraduate degree who are interested in pursuing or furthering their career in the information professions. The deadline for application is on June 21, 2021. Inquiries about the application process requirements or the MLS program may be directed to the graduate program coordinator, Professor Jonathan Isip at gpc at slis.upd.edu.ph. The latest issue of the Philippine Journal of Librarianship and Information Studies with the editorial entitled LIS Pedagogy in the New Normal Learning Environment is now available. You may download the free copy of the PHJLIS by going to phjlis.org. You may also submit your articles by logging into the same website, or if you have any inquiries, you may send your email to editor at phjlis.org. JLIS.org. Please also check out the article Transitioning to RDA The Philippine Experience by Ana Maria Fresnido and Marita Valerio, both from the De La Salle University Libraries. This article is published at the PHJLIS, so please do check it out. We would also like to thank those who already purchased our SLIS coffee table book. For those of you who have no copies yet, you can now pre order 
for our next print run by going to bit.ly slash SLISCTD. Again, that's bit.ly slash SLISCTD. And for those of you who have fond memories of UPSLIS or ILS or ILIS, we also want to know your best, funniest, weirdest, oddest, scariest, sappiest memories in SLIS through a project called Hashtag I Remember. So if you have something that you want to share, please go to upslis.info slash I remember. Again, that's upslis.info slash I remember. And also, to ensure that every DLIS student is equipped with the required tools or gadgets for remote learning, the Kaagapay Project for UP BLIS students of the UP Library Science Alumni Association or the UP LSAA is still ongoing. This is in support of the program of the UP system, Kaagapay sa Pag-aaral ng mga scholar ng bayan. You may donate in cash or in kind to help our BLIS students who may be struggling with remote learning. You may send your inquiries to uplsaa.inc.gmail.com. And finally, UPSLIS is still accepting donations for the construction and renovation of our new SLIS building. For your donations or other inquiries, you may contact us via email at admin at slis.upd.edu.ph. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our new twitch.tv, and like our Facebook page, UPSLIS, where this video is currently being streamed. That's UPSLIS on YouTube and Facebook. So shout out also to a lot of our viewers, some of whom are, I think, preparing for the LLE or doing their review. So good luck on that exam, and thank you for tuning in. At this point, I believe our viewers have some questions submitted. So let's not address the questions posted on menti.com. Hello, Sir Mark. Hello, good afternoon, Paul. Uh, good afternoon. Medyo marami pong questions. No, unahin po natin tong uh, pinakaunang nag-submit. Uh, according to our viewer, how is Ferber, uh, Frad, and Fasad applied to actual cataloging of materials. I know that during your presentation, you mentioned some example, but I think the user wants to give us an example of how, are, how these entities are being applied, especially in describing materials. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, the three FR models, F, uh, Ferber, Fad, and Prasad, are, are what they are conceptual models. Okay? So they are used as the basis for the creation of uh, cataloging rules, um, standards, or anything that we are going to use as a guide on how we describe these information resources. Now, uh, for an actual uh, application or uh, utilization of the three uh, FR models, we have RDA because uh, RDA, when it was uh, created or when it was uh, designed by the steering committee for the development of RDA, they've considered and they've uh, adapted the three FR models when it comes to uh, creating or uh, structuring the rules of uh, RDA. That's why uh, if we are going to uh, utilize RDA, at least in its original form, we need to be familiar with the entities that they've prescribed in Ferber, Prad, and Prasad. However, uh, in the utilization of Prasad, you would notice that there are some sections in the original RDA that don't have the rules when it comes to describing the, uh, the entities, uh, concepts, objects, events, and places and uh, even establishing the relationships between those entities. It's because uh, during the time that they were uh, planning and uh, creating the rules for those entities, they've come up with the decision that hey, we are uh, going to implement or use IFLA LRM instead in the creation of the new RDA toolkit or the new RDA. 
So, for an example on how fiber is utilized, we have RDA. So, if for example, we have uh, the elements on how to describe a particular manifestation. So, we have the title proper, the designation of edition, the um, publication statement, wherein you have the specific elements, place of publication, uh, name, uh, publisher name, publisher's name, or the date of publication. Then, when it comes to a FRAD, okay, now, it will depend on, uh, or if you, uh, as the library, are implementing or maintaining an authority record, because that is the purpose of your of FRAD, functional requirements for authority data. So we are not describing information resources in FRAD. Instead, we are uh, using it as a basis in creating our authority records, not bibliographic records. Similarly, uh, Prasad can be utilized in the creation of your controlled vocabularies, such as your authorized list of subject headings. Because in Prasad, we establish, as I mentioned in the lecture, we establish the relationships between terminologies, such as you have a broader term, narrower term, related terms, and uh, other um, components, okay, which we can find in, a part, in the standard subject disorders. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Mark, for clarifying that. Again, these three FR are functional requirements and rather are the basis for these other uh, tools, you know, the RDA, creating authority files, and so on. Thank you so much, Sir Mark. Uh, we have another question here, uh, and they want to know what is the purpose of uh, of the IFLA LRM, I think this is in the context of the Philippines. So do you think this is this will be too much confusing to Philippine libraries with so many models to follow in cataloging? Okay. Uh, again, uh, IFLA LRM is a consolidation of the three FR models. Okay. Now, uh, in the context of the Philippines, okay, uh, we acknowledge that uh, up until now, we have libraries which are not yet ready to implement even the original RDA. Okay? Because uh, in uh, the implementation of the original RDA, the encoding uh, standard or the medium in which we are going to place our bibliographic elements is in the form of a card catalog. Okay. So that's this also the same when it comes to implementing the new uh, RDA uh, toolkit, wherein it is based in the IFLA LRM conceptual model. Now, um, while we acknowledge that there are differing uh, implementations of uh, a particular descriptive cataloging standard here in the Philippines, uh, we need to face the reality that uh, there will be uh, a different uh, or different approaches when it comes to uh, whether we are going to stick with AACR2, uh, with the original RDA, or with the new uh, official RDA toolkit. Okay. Uh, well, maybe to avoid uh, the confusion, I think we have to stick to the one of the basic principles and why we organize or why we use this descriptive cataloging standards or why we create catalogs. Okay, it is because we want to facilitate the retrieval of information resources. Okay? So uh, at one time uh, during our sessions in, uh, in during uh, a refresher program session, I was asked what is the purpose of uh, understanding, uh, for example, Dublin 4. It is not a descriptive cataloging standard. It is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a metadata schema. It, is not, it doesn't prescribe you in how you describe uh, the title, okay, unlike in AECR2, but it provides you with a framework on what are the uh, required elements that we are going to uh, include in a bibliographic record, representing or which will serve as the document surrogate or simply the surrogate for resources. So uh, I think what is more important is we need to understand our community first. If the, our community or your target users are more uh, familiar 
with AACR2, okay, then uh, I don't think it's uh, entirely wrong that we are going to stick with AACR2 because it is still uh, a standard and it works okay, with some uh, individuals. Okay. At the same time, uh, RDA might be more efficient okay, and even utilizing uh, not AACR2 or RDA, but instead we are going to use a doubling core and other metadata schemas. So, uh, it, again, it will depend on your institution. It doesn't... Uh, uh, the endeavor of uh, organizing information should uh, not be confusing. Okay? As long as we are uh, uh, with that mindset that we are doing this okay, to facilitate the trial for our users, not for the convenience of the one who are creating the information retrieval tools. Very well said. Uh, Sir Mark, we had a lot of viewers right now. And just in case their institution want to embark on using RDA, open po ba kayo for consultations? Ano man po? Again po, hindi lang po ako. I believe um, as information professionals, I, um, tayo naman po ay dapat ay nagtutulungan dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? Uh, if you want to uh, seek the assistance on how to organize your information resources. Nandito po kami, nandito ang uh, UPSLIS, nandito po uh, ang mga information professionals na handang tumulong sa inyo. All right. Uh, let's go back to the questions submitted by the users. There's actually a lot of questions that came in. Uh, Sir Mark, what would you say to those librarians and information professionals that argue the way to go is resource description framework and some form of linked data. Well, by all means, go. Okay. Uh, I believe that uh, um, there are advantages okay, and disadvantages when it comes to utilizing uh, a descriptive cataloging standard. Okay. For example, uh, when libraries uh, utilize AACR2, and they decide to create a uniform or a union catalog, it will be easy to integrate all those records because they share the same standard. Okay? But again, uh, it is limited only to the description of information resources using AACR2. Okay? And it might not be uh, as, uh, what you call, um, as accessible as uh, if we are going to use a resource description framework or any uh, open metadata schema. So uh, if your uh, institution or if you as a, an advocate for uh, open information organization sees that uh, AACR2 or RDA is uh, not appropriate for my needs and most especially for the needs of my target users, then uh, I don't think it's uh, a problem if you are going to use uh, RDF, um, Dublin Core, or any other metadata schema. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Mark. The uh, next question is not actually a question. Gusto niya lang magsabi ng, hi, sir. So, hi. Hello po. <laughs> and the next question here is actually, baka possible na maging thesis na ng mga students na nanonood ngayon. Sir, do you have any data if whether Philippine libraries are already using this IFLA LRM? Would you know, sir? Well, uh, as of now, I am not aware if there are libraries here or any information or uh, institution here in the Philippines which utilize IFLA LRM as a conceptual model in their uh, cataloging rules or in their uh, description rules. Now, uh, maybe if uh, they are using the new uh, RDA toolkit, then th that will serve as the answer, that they are uh, using uh, if la at least uh, a, rather a full or partial implementation of uh, if la LRM or the new RDA. Then yeah, uh, I agree with your uh, suggestion, Sir PJ, that it could also serve as uh, a topic for their future thesis or dissertation. Okay? 
what are the pers- uh, I'm going to be giving a particular topic. What are the perceptions of uh, librarians when it comes to the URTA? Do I do they agree with it or so can they propose alternatives if it is not feasible for them? Yeah. Thanks, Mark. A lot of topic uh, can be made out of that question. No? Uh, there's another question here. I don't know if uh, maybe the viewer may want to expound on this one. Uh, they ask, does the UPRCEPS is still updated and is still followed in all UPCUs? Uh, I don't okay. know if you're aware with this one. Alam niyo po ba sir? Okay. Um, Sige, ay lagay po natin sa ano uh, or i-define po natin para sa viewers natin. Uh, the UPRCEPS is uh, the University of the Philippines RDA for Elements and Policy Statement. Now, uh, I am not in the position to uh, say uh, or to answer that uh, question because I am not part of the committee uh, in charge and uh, in the creation, development, or maintenance of that uh, stack. So uh, I think the best um, person or uh, okay, corporate body, if I'm going to use the terminologies in if the LRM, is the University Library of UP Dilaman. Okay, specifically, perhaps the cataloging uh, section or the technical section. Okay, shout out to mga the UP May Library. Hello. Okay, so another question here is, what are the differences between the old RDA and official RDA in terms of subscribing bibliographic data? I think some of these were already answered in the presentation, but if you can just give like some of the big differences between the old RDA and the official RDA. Well, for one, there are additional elements that they've uh, uh, provided in the new RDA toolkit, for example. Uh, there is a new element which is the title of manifestation or the title of the manifestation. Okay. So it is a more, uh, it's uh, uh, what we call a, uh, a broader, right? if I'm going to use uh, a terminology in um, a subject, course. it's a broader term for all the titles which are associated with a particular manifestation. So it could be the title proper, could be a title proper of the series, an abbreviated title, or basically any title uh, that we assign to represent a particular attribute or aspect of that manifestation. Okay. Then uh, another um, difference or another another thing new in uh, the new RDA is that they have included uh, other entities which are prescribed by the LRM. For example, you have uh, the nomen. Okay. So you have an entity nomen okay, for uh, as a basis in describing uh, names. Okay. So it could be a name for a word, uh, an expression, uh, an agent, and what type of agent? It could be a person, a family, or a corporate body. Okay. So that uh, nomen or that entity nomen could be an entity by itself, or it could be an attribute, okay? uh, if I'm not mistaken. It could be also use an attribute for a particular entity in RDA. Okay? So there are a lot of uh, changes uh, in the new RDA as compared to the original RDA toolkit. So, and I think that will uh, be uh, considered as uh, maybe uh, another topic uh, for discussion in uh, maybe in our future webinars or in another venue. I agree. I agree with that one. Uh, Sir Mark, I think this next question is very relevant to you given that you're the one handling most of our information organization courses. Uh, the viewer wants to know if given that RDA uh, is the new standard, should we still teach AACR2 to students beyond discussing it as a historical manner? Well, since uh, here in the Philippines, uh, part of the uh, requirements or what was the, um, I'm thinking of that word, uh, competencies of a graduate of a degree 
in LIS, whether it's a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in LIS, is that they should be uh, competent in utilizing the descriptive cataloging standards uh, as prescribed uh, by uh, perhaps the board for librarians and also considering uh, the standards which are uh, being recognized by accrediting agencies. So I am not aware or I'm not sure if uh, some accrediting agencies would uh, accept that uh, if you are going to catalog uh, or if you are going to maintain a catalog, you can maintain a catalog, but not strictly following AACR2 or RDA or any prescribed uh, standard in the description of resources. Okay? So uh, as long as there is a requirement that we need to equip our graduates on how to utilize AACR2 and RDA, then I believe we still, uh, or we are required to teach them those uh, knowledge and the skill. Okay? However, it doesn't mean that we are not going to teach them uh, what you call a the broader perspective when it comes to understanding why we organize information resources. Okay? It's not, uh, how we create catalogs, but how or why we create these catalogs, or how, why we create bibliographies, indexes, and other types of information retrieval tools. Okay? Again, what is important is that all of us understand that we create, we maintain these information retrieval tools because we want to facilitate access and retrieval of resources, especially those which are considered as great literature. As long as we imbibe that principle, okay, then um, whether we are using uh, a descriptive cataloging standard, a metadata schema, okay, it won't matter okay, uh, because we can still attain that particular goal. Okay, uh, maraming salamat, Sir Mark. Uh, there's another linked data question here. Uh, isn't it easier to use linked data rather than creating and using a high-level conceptual model uh, like IFLA LRM, if you want data from information centers to be more discoverable? Well, uh, I think I would like to uh, emphasize that um, mm -hmm. LRM okay, uh, was designed okay, considering that uh, it will be used in a linked data environment. Okay. Now, if uh, you as the one responsible or the one who would like to uh, create uh, a schema okay, on how we should describe information resources and implement it in a linked data environment without using uh, IFLA LRM, then I think that is fine. Okay. Um, this uh, conceptual models, whether it's uh, it's Ferber, Prad, Prasad, and its consolidation, which is IFLA LRM, these are just what we call guides. Okay? Uh, it, they are not describing us to uh, utilize IFLA LRM or any of those uh, three FR models when uh, creating and maintaining our bibliographic records and authority records. So if okay, if you see fit that the uh, big data is a more efficient way on how we can access and retrieve this information resource, which is, I believe, okay, it's the future of uh, how we should uh, describe information resources, uh, especially in this uh, uh, web environment, okay, then I don't think that, it, that will be, uh, that there is no issue when it comes to uh, using linked data okay, as a guiding uh, concept. Okay. Uh, sir, there's another question here that is, again, pwede ulit thesis topic to, no? What do you think would be the challenges of the libraries that are currently using the original RDA if they want to switch to the new RDA? Um, well, first challenge is to be familiar with the interface. Um, as I've uh, presented earlier, uh, well, at least uh, the main interface of the original and uh, the new RTA toolkit. 
uh, it is not uh, the same anymore in terms that uh, we have these particular sections that each section is, uh, we have a series of chapters. Okay? And uh, when we refer to the rules for a particular attribute uh, on how we describe attributes or its relationships, we no longer have those uh, particular uh, numbers. Okay? For example, a rule number 1.1.1. Okay? That is no longer the case when it comes to the new uh, or the official RDA toolkit. Okay? So that is one challenge. Okay? Then another challenge is that uh, we need to rethink or we need to uh, re-examine uh, the elements that we include in our bibliographic records okay? in order to accommodate the elements that were uh, provided in the new RDE toolkit. Okay? Now, uh, I would also like to emphasize that the new RDA toolkit, okay, as um, uh, stated by the RDA steering committee, that is not a cataloging code similar to AACR2. Okay? If uh, it will depend on your application profile, okay, on what uh, elements that you would like to include in your uh, Capital, okay, using the new RDA. For example, if you decide that uh, you don't want to use the entity nomen in your new catalog or in your uh, elements to describe a particular resource, then that is okay for RDA. So again, it will depend on your committee on how you are going to utilize uh, RDA, whether you are going to make a full implementation of the uh, entities as prescribed by the new RDA, or if you're going to decide uh, just to select okay, those important uh, uh, aspects. Uh, one, uh, one example is that when it comes to creating bibliographies, we can utilize uh, entity or we can utilize IFLA LRM in the creation of uh, bibliographies. However, we are not going to include the item uh, entity for bibliographies because that is not what a bibliography is, okay? unless it is a pathfinder. Okay? If it is a pathfinder, then we have to describe uh, what is the particular um, classific or uh, call number and uh, how many items are there in that particular uh, library or collection. And so again, uh, it will depend okay, uh, on the institution, but okay, it is a challenge, of course. Okay? We need to recognize that uh, there has to be some series of trainings, uh, workshops, and seminars on how we can uh, orient uh, and uh, educate uh, the new breed of uh, information organizers in how we can utilize RDA in their uh, institution. Okay. Uh, Sir Mark, there's a quick question here. Is the official RDA compatible with Mark 21? Uh, Yes, I could say yes because uh, while it is still a work in progress, the the RDE steering committee is continuously uh, drafting, or I think there is no longer a draft, but they are continuously improving uh, the mapping of uh, bibliographic uh, elements okay, or entities if we are going to use Mark Twenty One as your encoding standard. Okay. Yes, uh, it is compatible okay, because that is what they are, uh, or that is one of those considerations. However, uh, I would also like to emphasize that if you are not uh, fond of uh, Mark 21, or if you are, if you think that Mark 21 is not sufficient in uh, accommodating all the elements of uh, the new RDA, then you are not uh, restricted in utilizing Mark 21. Uh, I would also like to note that even the original RDA toolkit, okay, they acknowledge that the elements that they prescribe in the original RDA toolkit cannot be uh, uh, cannot be accommodated entirely by Mark Twenty One alone. Okay? For example, uh, the entity uh, work manifested. Okay? It is uh, the work uh, manifested uh, entity or uh, element. Okay? Uh, rather, it cannot be uh, encoded in Mark 21 format because there is no uh, field yet 
for that particular uh, element. Okay? So I believe that uh, in the future, perhaps we can um, fully in a map of all the elements in Mark 21 okay, for uh, well, of all the elements of uh, art of the new RDA to Mark 21. But yeah, uh, you are not uh, restricted in utilizing Mark 21. Okay. Uh, I think this is the final question, uh, Sir Mort. Uh, the question is, how can the IFLA LRM and RDA be implemented in practice? Can you recommend a specific system that supports it? I guess uh, if they want to start implementing this, ano yung mga kailangan nilang mga tools or systems to get started? Uh, ayun po. Um, maybe they can utilize uh, their current integrated library system, which is Mark 21 compliant. Uh, Gaya na nabangit ko po kanina, ang uh, bagong RDA toolkit ay pwedeng magamit uh, in our current uh, system. Okay? However, again, uh, since um, the new RDA uh, is still uh, continuously evolving, as it should be. Eh? Lahat naman, uh, lahat ng bagay, eh, pwede yung mag-evolve, pwede yung ma-revise, pwede yung ma-update. Eh? So, kapag ganun, eh, ganun din, we have to adapt the system or the our integrated library system if we want to utilize uh, the new RDA toolkit. So, siguro depende na po yan sa kung uh, sino yung, uh, halimbawa, sino yung provider ng software ng integrated library system or we can create, or maybe someone could create a new system, okay, which is not entirely uh, Mark 21 compliant, but more on um, maybe uh, Mark XML okay, or simply XML, or even we can wait uh, in the future because uh, in, the, in the plans of the Library of Congress in the United States, they are already uh, continuously um, developing the evolution or the replacement of Mark 21, which is the frame. And the new RDA it was designed it, to uh, at least be compatible with the frame. So maybe in the future, if uh, uh, developers it, can create a new system which can uh, utilize BigFrame as an encoding standard, then that, I would uh, say, is one of my recommendations for a system that can accommodate the new RDA toolkit. Okay. Uh, Sir Mark, thank you very much for answering our viewers' questions. Medyo maramirami yung mga questions na yan. And I hope uh, our audiences are now more enlightened no, on what this new IFLA LRM model is. At this point, we will now award the Certificate of Appreciation to our speaker. We just read the certificate. Uh, the certificate reads, the University of the Philippines School of Library and Information Studies presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Mark Anthony A. Santos, RL MLIS, for delivering his valuable webinar entitled, IFLA Library Reference Model LRM, towards the new RDA was part of the 2020 UP School of Library and Information Studies lecture series in celebration of its 59th anniversary. Given this fifth day of May 2021 at the University of the Philippines Diliman, Quezon City, signed Rhea Rowena U. Apolinario SLIS faculty and head of the SLIS Road to 60 committee and Mary Grace P. Golf of Barcelona SLIS Ah, uh, yan, nawawala siya. <laughs> yan, okay po. <laughs> Pagkakarating. Maraming salamat po. Okay, thank you very much, Sir Mark. Again, uh, thank you and we wish you success in all of your endeavors. To all our viewers, thank you also for joining us and I hope you all had meaningful takeaways from this webinar. Thank you too to our SLS faculty for making this event possible. A special shout out to Professor Nathan Isip, Professor Mark Santos, our speaker, and Professor Dan Dorado for managing the tech side of this event. And to Professor Johan Frederick Kabab and Mr. Bridge Paul Reyes for their work on the graphics and publicity materials.
To receive your certificates, please don't forget to register using the link to be shown on screen. If you miss portions of this webinar, you may rewatch it as a Facebook video or check our YouTube channel where our recording of this webinar is uploaded. For updates on our upcoming activities, please follow Please follow us at our official Facebook page, UPSLIS. Subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels, youtube.com slash UPSLIS and twitch.tv slash UPSLIS. Or visit our website, slis.upd.edu.ph. You can also catch our online talk shows on YouTube. For the record, Faculty Room, the Student Produced Digital Scholarship Series, and the latest coffee break reflections and conversations. If you like our videos on social media, please don't hesitate to share it on your social network. Not only that, but also we're prepping for some more upcoming activities. So watch out. These are, are all part of our journey on the road to 60. Looking forward to the 60th anniversary of the UPSLIS this July 2021. Please join us for the last installment of our hashtag Webinar Wednesday series this coming June 2021. Our next feature is entitled Changing Gears, Qualitative or Quantitative Research. Uh, we will have Professor Ira Venoso Kabab and Professor Dan Anthony Dorado as our speakers. This will be on the 2nd of June 2021 at 2 p.m. Philippine Standard Time. Okay. And that wraps up our UPSLS webinar for this month. Once again, this is Paul Jason Perez, your host and moderator, wishing you all the best. See you on our next webinar. Paalam.